pull off the consent agenda and talk about. If not, I'd entertain a motion for. I'll approval. make a motion. I'll second it. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes five to zero. Uh, item number four, which is public hearing. Um, I guess the public works director is going to present this one, as far well as the city I manager. can do that. Okay. This is... Uh, I need to read the title first, you need to, please. Okay. <laughs> An ordinance of the city of Vero Beach, Florida, abandoning certain portions of 29th Street, Carissa Drive, and Park L Median, lying within plat number three, Rural Park Subdivision, as recorded in plat book four, at page 88 of the public records of St. Lucie County, Florida, said lands lying and being in Indian River County, Florida, providing for conflict and severability, providing for an effect. Date. Uh, this is an easement or part of the street right of way. We had closed a portion of the street several years ago and it was unused property by us. The two neighbors, i.e., the Vero Beach Country Club and the adjoining uh, residential neighbor, came together and divided this property up, and uh, which we agree with because we have no use. We still retain the 60 foot right of way on Carissa Dry uh, Road, which is what we really wanted to maintain. This other portion was adjacent to it, but we were not using it. So we would recommend that we uh, go with the agreement of abandoning that right away. Okay. Any questions from the council for the city manager? Move for approval. Pub public comment. No. Yeah, well, we'll uh, is there any uh, members from the, from the public like to speak on this? No, okay. <laughs> All right. We do have a, move, uh, a moval for approval. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a roll call. Ms. Bach, would you uh, do your due, duty here? Mr. Howell? Yes. Mr. Winger? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Uh, number five, resolutions. The resolution of the City Council of the City of Vero Beach, Florida, adopting the Economic Development Plan for the Historic Downtown Vero Beach Economic Development Zone, providing for conflict and severability, providing for an effective date. Okay. Would you, uh, would you like to give us a few words on this? Well... I was present at your last meeting, um, Jessica Hawkins, chairman of the Economic Development Committee, and we brought forward our resolution and our economic development plan and went over it last week. I don't know if anyone has any questions from last time I was here. I know you weren't here. Paul. I, I apologize, yes, that I wasn't at that's the meeting, okay. and I assume this is the same document as Exhibit A that's attached to our ordinance that, yes, that was reviewed. Yes. Um, I guess it, uh, maps and signage, you said seven possible locations. I thought, you know, the city of Vero Beach is kind of small, and I'm wondering how many, you know, are we going to cover up our city, you know, with maps and signage, any more so than we have at the moment? <laughs> right. No, ma'am. Um, what we would do, um, there are seven possible locations Obviously, with an amount at approximately $4,000 a piece, we obviously wouldn't be able to do something like that for quite some time. So it would go one at a time, and chances are those seven locations might become four or five. We might even see it only be three. Okay. So. Um. Just as a reminder to council, remember these are going to be budgeted monies by the city council in your budget, and you have the ultimate authority as to how it's spent. They have presented a plan and saying ideally under uh, uh, circumstances that we would agree with that they would de do these projects. But if it came down, as an example, let's say that you had uh, a sidewalk project you wanted to do in the downtown on 14th Avenue, you could authorize the use of these funds for that type of project. Um, and special theme lighting. Mm -hmm. You're talking about this would just be for a short period of time that you would have lighting in there, or is this? The goal is to continue the lighting that has been placed on Main Street along 14th Avenue to continue that through the district. Okay, so this is basically per essentially permanent lighting to... to Correct. Uh, it would be changing out the light poles that are currently there. To designate that. Okay. Right. And as far as costs of maintaining these new lights... 
or it would be comparable, or hopefully they'd be more efficient if we're changing them that would be going to more efficient type fixtures. But Yeah, the consumption would be, would be less because we'd probably go to some type of LED fixture, yeah. but it would be a historic antique, I think, is the type of Correct. fixture yeah, the head fixture that they itself, would want. Yeah, the look. Okay. And, and we would work with the, uh, the folks uh, in downtown in order to see if we could make it uniform with some of the uh, suppliers that we have right now that would reduce our cost and maintenance and be able to acquire the parts that would be necessary. I guess stamping this, the crosswalks once we no cost incurred to EDC. I guess my basic issue with this exhibit is that there aren't very clear numbers. When it ref, the ordinance itself references section 2926 of our city code and saying that we're being asked to approve this per that section. And I go back to the city code. And it says that the development of an economic development plan identifying infrastructure, capital improvements, and expenditures necessary to implement and support such program would be included. And although this is you know, a great first pass at a list of things, I have you know, no issue with the things you've identified. I don't think that we've given sufficient um, information on the financial basis for these There are quite a few items that we have actually talked to other local groups about mm -hmm. in order to work in partnership with them. <clears throat> item, let's see, the item about the, um, which used to be A2, was a item that was called a painted walking trail. We've actually partnered with the Cultural Council and the Heritage Center and Main Street. And there are some items that have actually been removed. Uh, that item A2 it has been taken on by Main Street and the Heritage Center. They are working on a historical walking trail. So that item came right off of our list. No longer pertinent to us. We will bless them and, and help them in any way that they need. But that's our ultimate goal, is to get these items achieved in such a manner that it won't cost us anything. OK, when you say won't cost us, when I look over the it's just it's looking at cost as strictly to the economic development zone. Right. You know, obviously, there, there are other costs to things that you're expecting the city to pick up under our budget. So. You know, the terminology, it's going to cost somebody somewhere, you know, and whether it's done with a partnership, which is great, or you're asking the city to put it in our budget, those costs don't just go away. <laughs> we understand that. And that's why anything that is done that is on this list would have to come before city council for approval. And you can yay or nay it from there. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, all these projects would be city projects. It's just right. that the funding comes from that development zone, from that tax increment funding. Or, and the city can add money to it if need be, if the council so decided. Yeah. I'll go ahead and make a motion for approval. I'll second it. Um, is there any other public comment or council comment? If not, Tammy, I'm going to let you call a roll call on this one. Okay. Mr. Howell? Yes. Mr. Winger? Yes. Mrs. Turner? No. Mr. Ohl? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Passes four to one. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tammy, I'm going to let you do 6A and B. Okay. Um, 6A is an ordinance, and the public hearing will be held on May 17, 2016, an ordinance of the City of Vero Beach, Florida, amending Chapter 62, Article 4, M Industrial District, of Part 3, Land Development Regulations in the Code of the City of Vero Beach related to permissible floor area for accessory, accessory recreational uses, providing for codification, providing for conflict and severability, providing for an effective date. The next ordinance will have two public hearings held on on May 17th and June 7th, 2016, an ordinance of the City of Vero Beach, Florida, amending various provisions. Part 3, land development regulations in the code of the City of Vero Beach related to permit, permitted uses in certain non-residential zoning districts, providing for codification, providing for conflict and severability, providing for an effective date. You're still up for your matters. Okay, um, I just brought the summer council meetings to council's um, uh, 
jurisdiction as we're getting closer to summer and usually we do cancel the first meeting in July and our first meeting in August and just want to know if council wanted to do the same thing this year. Mr. Mayor, I would certainly uh, support the cancel the, the, those changes for our schedule for the summer. However, I would ask that the August 16th meeting be changed to a morning meeting. Okay. And I, I would ask that the uh, July meeting be held during our budget process rather than uh, later in the month. So it be held on something like what do you say? So the we'd be looking at July 12th. We yes. normally would um, hold our July meeting on July 5th, so we would cancel the July 5th meeting and not hold our next meeting, which would be July 19th, and hold it in the middle, which would be July 12th, and that would right. be a morning meeting. Uh, I don't think, well, maybe on the, uh, we'll be doing the budgeting in the morning, right? Well, yeah, I think we, it'd be The budget day. actually starts yeah, the next day the on the 13th. The uh, budget is the 13th, 13th, 14th, and 15th. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, everybody's got that. We're going to have the one meeting in July, which will be on the 12th, which will be in, in combination with our uh, uh, budget meetings. And then August 16th, we'll move from an evening to a morning, and the first meeting in August will be canceled. Did I get it. that right? Yeah, That's and it. the first meeting in July will be canceled. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're all on board with that? Yeah, and also yeah. a little memo to everybody so you can get your calendars right. And the only other thing I had was um, I just attached the different openings that we have on our boards. Yeah. You attached you. them? Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I may I ask her a question also? Um, I believe you have been working on fixing our live stream to open it up and make it more usable so it's is not as irritating and yeah. more available. Is that not true? Yes, we actually did get the contract back yesterday. It's been going between back and forth between the lawyers. And um, I think we're all settled now to sign the contract. And what this will do was um, we will have the live streaming without any advertisements in between. And we will also be providing our um, televising of our council meetings and our other meetings on AT&T as well as Comcast. God bless. That's one small step forward for humanity. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll go ahead and go to the uh, the city manager's matters. I have three items, uh, Mayor and Council. First is the emergency replacement of the 13 kV uh, bus at the power plant. As you know, uh, around Easter we had a malfunction of that bus inside the plant. I sent you all the information when we got the bids for the uh, uh, replacement of that bus bar by city code, I am required to report to you that it was $164,300, and we have moved that bus bar out into the substation yard. But it was an emergency expenditure that I called and uh, felt like we needed to do something before we could actually do formal bidding on it. So uh, I'm uh, the, the process, tell me. The process. When there's an emergency and you've got to do something, you have the ability to go ahead and do it. Yes, sir. And I have tell the, us after. I have the authority to do it, yeah. and then I have the requirement to report to you that it is being done, and then you have the authority to take whatever action on me that you wish to do okay. at that point. <laughs> okay. So that, that is a report to 164300 Yes, Just yes, one question. You had a note that the funding would be modified. Where would it all come from? The miscellaneous capital projects is where the funding came from, but that it will, you would also need a, a subsequent funding amendment? Uh, only if we do a budget amendment, we would need that. And if we have to bring forward a budget amendment, we anticipate there will be some budget amendments this year. Okay, but for this particular emergency, what, for this $164,000 that you said it's coming from that, then there's not no, ma'am. There, a budget amendment needed for just that expense? Not, not at this time, no. Okay. It would be when, when we bring the other budget amendments, we'd bring them as a group. Thank you. This is just uh, recognizing that the money had been spent. Next item is on uh, grounds maintenance. We went out for the mowing services. Uh, we broke it down into two areas. One is our medium requirements, uh, median requirements, in which are public uh, areas that we have to go over on a pretty regular basis. The second is the uh, low maintenance area, which is the Dodger Town Golf Course. Uh, we are recommending that we go with the low bidder of the Dodger Town Golf Course, which is $8,800. 
uh, to do that. The other bid was between 62 and 110,000. They did not give us three-year quotes. They only gave us a one-year quote. Uh, for around that $62,000, we could hire one person and do the same job, have more control over it. We would supplement that with some of our forces now. But two things it really does. One, it gives us more control as to the uh, flexibility of moving somebody from site to site. The other thing is it will really reduce, I feel, a lot of the complaints that we get. And we have one person who spends an awful lot of time telling citizens we've got to go out. But you have the rainy season that we just went through. You have a contractor, even at $62,000, which we think is a lot of money, if he has a schedule for Thursday and it rains all day Thursday, he's going to go to his Friday client on Friday. And so we miss out, and the residents in that general area have a tendency to notice those type of <laughs> things. Jim, I guess my only uh, concern with this is that uh, it sounds to me like we could hire a guy at roughly 62 grand or we could contract it out for roughly 62 grand and so um, my only concern would be uh, in the case that perhaps maybe you could clear this up for me but if we have a new employee on um, who's going to be on our payroll every year and that employee becomes ill or has a work comp claim or what have you um, we'd then be on the hook for whatever those costs are, plus we'd have a subcontractor to hire to perform the work. That You understand what I mean? I, I know exactly where you're going, but the answer to the question is, no, we would not. We may have overtime to supplement that worker's ability. The other thing is, one of the things that the council has done that has really reduced our exposure on our employees, for example, you've, we do not, no longer have the defined benefit pension plan. So long-term exposure has really been limited. You're right, we do have workman's comp, but I will tell you that in the cases, even though we require our contractors to have insurance, when something happens, when somebody starts suing people, the first call they make is to the city because it's city right away. Now, we do and have been fairly successful in pushing most of that onto the contractor because of our requirements for insurance costs, but we do have exposure there as well. So it's it, it's one or the other. I, I'm looking at it as more of an efficiency issue than I am at an expense issue, uh, since the numbers are really close. The other is we're going to be faced with the same thing next year. We can control, the city council can control the cost of our employees, but on the bidding contract, and as you saw, it went from 49000 last year to 62000 this year. And I anticipate that next year we would even have a greater number, mm -hmm. especially when your second or your high bidder was $110,000. Right. I mean, it's getting almost to the ridiculous point. Mr. Well, Mr. I mean, no doubt we have a high maintenance community. We want to keep our city beautiful. And I, I do am empathetic of all the complaints and things that we've heard in the past. <clears throat> Will this doing this work in house, will it necessitate the purchase of another 72 inch riding mower? Bonnie Falls, Director of Public Works. Yes, to, to achieve the same efficiencies that they have, we would ultimately need a 72-inch mower. Whether we buy that day one or use it as a normal replacement cycle when one of our other mowers is scheduled to be replaced, but we included that as, as the depreciation cost in there to show it as a, as a full cost accounting, showing our cost versus theirs. But to say we, we'll buy one day one, it would be when one of our mowers was ready to be replaced, instead of buying a 60-inch, we would buy a 72-inch for for that task and not replace that 60-inch. What's the approximate cost of a 72-inch? Those those mowers run about nine thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Mayor, if I may comment, mm -hmm. we employ Mr. O'Connor and Mr. Falls to make the decisions in this area. And I've always believed that management's getting things done through others. And I was the one two years ago that showed a photo of a little boy uh, in, uh, I think it was a piece of pie park with grass up under his armpit. And I complained to them vociferously. And I think we should let them get the grass mowed, 
the best way they can. I, I, I really not want much for micromanagement. So I, I agree with letting them do what they want to do. Well, we did uh, we did go forth and we did have the experiment with contracting these things out. Um, I mean, we did make our uh, make our effort there. Um, I'm inclined to agree to let the uh, the city manager make the decision on this. Um, I know we made a decision to go the other direction on it, and we got we got quite a lot of feedback and kickback on that. Um, again, I don't I'd like to keep an eye on that situation, and if it um, I certainly don't have a problem outsourcing other other items as they come along, but this one we've we've experimented with, and uh, I think we've learned our lesson. Uh -huh. we, we do need to outsource. We are recommending the outsourcing of the Dodger Town Golf Course into that contract. We could not touch the $8,800. One last question to take into consideration, Mr. O'Connor. Um, you mentioned that it will require less time for the, the, the uh, division manager to oversee the work. Uh, could you give me an idea? Is that quite a lot of time, or is that... Answering complaints and calls is a considerable period of time. We, we do try to do a lot of outreach, Mr. Howe, and the fact that we we follow up, and when somebody calls in and complains about a park not being mowed or weeds or whatever the case may be, we not only dispatch somebody out there to resolve it, or in the case of a contractor, contact the contractor and say, this needs to be addressed, then we follow up with the resident and follow up to make sure that the work was done. Good. And, and that's a function of time as well, and, t and we all know time is money. So thank you for your yes, answer. I, I think this option gives the city the, the best method to control rising costs in the future, and I would support your recommendation. Yeah, and, and doing the uh, request for proposals is not a bad idea. It makes us bid against ourselves as to what a contractor can do. Mm -hmm. And it is streamlining, as noticed in your uh, attachment, that at one time we had two people doing a lot of this. And Mr. Falls seems to think that we'll be able to do it because the contractor can do it with one person. We should be able to accomplish the same goal. Okay. Great. I'll support that. Okay, so I need to award the contract for the mowing of Dodger Town, and we'll just proceed and reject the other bids. Okay, before we go, is there any public comment about this item? Okay, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> just checking. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council, and I'll I will stay on task. <laughs> Just wanted to say thank you for agreeing with the city manager, uh, the subcontractor that was doing the work. I can tell you from firsthand experience, um, there was situations where the grass was overgrown. Also, not only with the grass overgrown, you also had a lot of debris in the smaller parks uh, where you had little children playing. You had stuff overgrown on the sidewalks. Also, there was a problem with a lot of the grass that was blown on the sidewalk. When I say a lot, I mean big piles of it where the kids would have to kick through it. Another nice thing about allowing your city folk to do their job, and by the way, they're very good at it, if there's other issues in the parks and on the playgrounds and on the sidewalks, uh, in the past, they've called it into the other departments in your city. So it's a big help. So you have a, you have your eyes in the park, in the parks. So that's a way to keep an eye on the infrastructure. It also will ho hold down on some of the accidents that could happen when you got big old pieces of rock uh, that kids are tripping over, or older people are tripping over in the fields, or not in the fields on these little playgrounds. You got some problems. So. Um, thank you. A lot of other people will thank you for allowing this contract to go forward as it was presented to you today. Thank you. You know, Mr. Degg, that brings up a good point. Um, we we find people in the city a lot of money for weeds, grass, and overgrowth um, due to code. And if the city has overgrowth, how can we find individuals? So that's a, that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Actually, uh, you make a good point because those points have been brought to my ears. Why? How come y'all are doing this over here, and you're, over here in your own backyard it looks pretty sloppy? Mm -hmm. But again, thanks very much, and thanks Thank for you. bringing up those points. Do Hard you to find ourselves because it all comes from the same taxpayer. Right. <laughs> that's, that's true. On this on this item, do you just want consensus, or would you like a motion? I'd like to have a motion to accept the bid on the Dodger, Dodger Down, Down and reject the other bid. I make a motion that we accept the bid on uh, the Dodger Town project and that we reject the bid for private contractor for the median project. Do we want separate ones or do you want to do 
We can do it together. One's fine with me. Okay. Do we have a second? Was it two separate bids? I'll second. It's on one bid. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It, it was two separate bids. So why don't you do, do Dodger Town first? Sure. Um, I'll make a motion that we accept the Dodger Town project uh, at, I think it was cost of $8,800. Okay. Dang. I'll second it. Thank All you. All in favor say aye. 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 Eric? And also, we'll make a motion that we decline the bid for uh, hiring a subcontractor for the medium project. No, I'll second it. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion's passed. Item C. Uh, discussion of the City Council regarding the 1617 <coughs> budget priorities. The Finance Director and I would like to, as we have annually done, see if there's any priorities, limitations, or how you would, uh, if there's something that the Council wants to add as we get into our budget preparation. I have several, Mr. Mayor, but uh, might be fair to take us take them one at a time. I, but I will th throw one forward, which is I think we need to cross over the OEB and other employee benefits. In other words, the benefits no for employees no for question. their medical insurance and so on who retired. We need to think about how we are going to somehow or another set up a trust fund to handle that, so that eventually it. We have a fund that will help us into the future. That's my first one. Well, keep 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 going. I think um, these are well. The the second one, the second one is, and I brought it up uh, two meetings ago, possibly three. Uh, I would like to look at the capital plan for the marina, uh, one way or another. Whether it's the proposal I made, which is neither here nor there, but I think the facility needs to be upgraded. Uh, I first saw it in 1974. It really hasn't changed much. One dock has been extended. But it's at the stage where, as Mr. Uh, O'Connor <laughs> says, that if a urinal falls off the wall, I probably shouldn't say that in public, we put it up. But it, it needs renovation. And I would like to see us you know, address that particular one. Uh, I do not think that uh, the last two budget meetings we've address the ongoing streets as much as we need to. In other words, we need to think carefully about how much money needs to be put into the budget for streets. On uh, the streets, I know we've done an annual, or like every three years we get a report on the yes. uh, condition of our streets, and I don't know where we are in that cycle. I, I'm I not don't sure. think we do another assessment this year. That we I don't still think have so that either. existing report. We do, and it projects out the three years. Okay. However, we've been reasonably, you know, I mean, uh, last year we did the center of 14th, but not the sides, which I guess is okay. It doesn't look bad. And the center of ocean, but we really, like 19th uh, Street, as an example, is not, and not good. And I can go around town and name you several others that, you know, are, are in need of attention in the medium term, not necessarily short term. So I think we have to think about streets. Uh, another one I think we have to think about is uh, storm water. And I, I think we should really make that part of the budget discussion. I mean, how do we deal with storm water? But the reality is this year we have 500 and whatever, two grants totaling about $540,000 for a mechanic in, uh, I was trying to think the other area, downtown. Not down. Yeah. And we really don't have the collateral funding. And, uh, you know, we, we still have the situation where we have only, you know, 37% of our runoff dealt with. So I, I, I think we need a long discussion of, of stormwater. I don't think it's something we should... Uh, by then, we'll have a report back, and I think we need to think about what we want to do into the future. But we do have stormwater problems. And uh, one other, my favorite, that I brought up a minute ago, uh, I think whether small or large, there's improvements in public information beyond the television. Um, and some of them, it could go all the way from having, as most other cities, Port St. Lucie, uh, Fort Pierce, and so on, have uh, Sebastian having a person actually in charge of it. This is a discussion. I'm not trying to have the discussion today. Uh, to minimal efforts such as modernizing the web page. In other words, when you have a boil water notice, uh, it should flop up on the web page. Uh, 
you know, we if you take, uh, I was trying to think of the town that does such a good job of it, but, you know, essentially, if you were to take uh, a parallel in our utilities billing system, I mean, we've had to face the fact that Kienta, you know, had has to be updated, and I think uh, Cindy and her people are moving in that, but I think we're at the stage where we have somewhat tired web page and we need to be thinking about what does it take? Can we upgrade what we have? Do we need to spend thirty or forty thousand dollars to have a more modern, functional one? Those are just topics. I'm not debating in them today, but those are my list of topics. And of course, I never want a tax increase. So there you go. It'll be a difficult session, Ms. Turner. Uh, one thing I'd like to see, and I know we've been talking about this, and I thought the Finance Commission was working on it, but I want a reserve policy. Yeah. brought to council and approved prior to budget time because I think that certainly is going to play in how we look at you know, <coughs> expenses coming for the year. Uh, could you, I'm sorry, what, what do you mean by that reserve policy? How and when we would expend any reserves, what um, you mean limits, the cash balance that, that type got? of thing. The whole, the whole discussion that we've had. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Good. We, we've been actually, in the process of developing. Yeah, yeah the, the, um, the Finance Commission has actually reviewed the draft policy that was proposed um, on two separate occasions. On their meeting on May the 26th, they will review the final version that they're planning to forward to you. Their recommendation to this point in time has been that it take the form of an order it's not just a resolution. And so um, hopefully if they do it on May the 26th at one of your early June meetings, you'll see that policy. And at that point, you can provide the uh, city attorney with your direction as to whether you would like to have that be adopted by ordinance or by resolution. So you will have something in front of you, again, with the goal that you stated last year of it okay. being adopted prior to the start of our budget work. Thank you so much. They've been working very hard on that with me. Anything else? No, and I, yeah, OPEB certainly is a, a number one priority for me as well. All right. Just to also let you know, we've been working on the callback system for emergencies and that type. Kianta has been involved with a uh, company that's working with the electric department, so we are trying to make sure that we modernize that. Is there any other budget directives that you'd like to see happen? Not at this time. I, 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 there's a couple of... I, I, if we are going to get into the, the sort of long-range planning thing, where are we going to get um, our, the regional planning people to come in and do something? Are we going to are, are we going out with an RFP to get somebody to come in and help us with the planning or not? That whole issue. You is talk about on. the comprehensive plan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do have somebody uh, that we have under contract that we're using that uh, Tim is using, but I think at the same time he's going to be proposing a position in his department. Okay. But that'll be a position that you all could, can debate. Okay. Um, the other thing was, I think we've had quite a big discussion with Monty talking about the idea of our infrastructure. It's need, we need to begin to plan on that, uh, replacing our infrastructure, and that was another thing. That he, and of course, we have our five-year plan that he yeah. put out, puts out there every year, but I, I think we do have a plan. Take the streets as an example. I think he's got projects in the stormwater and those type of things that are pretty easy to produce. Good. I mean, with with my big thing, it's just it's mainly you know keeping the keeping the taxes steady. I think we can do that, and uh, you know that reserve policy. So I'm I'm hoping we can go forward and actually have a good uh, good budget season this year. Did you? I, I assume you got. got yeah, I got direction. Well, one one other thing that I, I think you, I asked the council. I mean, you know, the Dodger Town Golf Course may or may not get sold in the window of time. And if it were, it would be a short sale, but it would reduce, you know, the 600000 plus um, debt service requirement. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of chicken or the egg. Uh, I mean, we really, I think we're going to essentially need that money, but on the other hand, it sells when it sells. Um, so, I, you know, the question becomes, I think we, we should give, the city manager and the city finance manager some sort of guidance like you know plan for six months and i'm just pulling this out of the air six months where we don't you know we no longer have it or some such thing i, I don't know i, I, I don't want to get into debate I, I would prefer not to do that we did a stormwater utility for this budget and it got us all wrapped around the axle uh, Cindy and I have talked about this. In my budget, I would propose that we present you with only what we know we're going to get. Okay. 
because it, it you just you get down the road and it doesn't sell or something we don't have the revenues and still people have an expectation something's going to happen and you know and, and that's really a very very fair comment because we had the long OEB you know conversation and we were going to halfway through the year you know, be able to sell the Dodge or golf course and start the program and start a trust fund, and it never really happened because we didn't get that far. So, yeah. I mean, your comment is, is germane, but the only point I make to you is, you know, uh, these list of things and the nominal things that you're going to come up with, uh, it's going to be extremely difficult to fit it all in. But I guess that's why you're city manager, sir. Because not all of them will get there, I'm sure. <laughs> Does, uh, does council have any other further questions for the city manager? I do have one question for the city manager. I'm noticing in, on FMPA minutes and notes that um, they are projecting that they would pay off the debt on our Stanton 1 and 2. Um, I said St. Lucie by 2026, Stanton 2 by 2027. Um, you know, on the two Stanton projects, we have over $185 million worth of debt, and St. Lucie, $330 million. Um, you still think that's realistic, that they are going to get those paid off without you know, looking at any further legislation on coal restrictions and emissions, et cetera? If everything stays status quo, the board has taken the direction that there will be no extension of existing debt and they want to be debt-free in less than 20 years for the entire FMPA. That being said, there is always a risk, and a risk could be that you could have a leak in the St. Lucie plant. We're on the hook as proposed before. But I will say that they have built up very good reserves on their debt service. They have done a very good job, and hopefully the Stanton plant will be paid off at least a year in advance. Uh, that it appears because their reserve account is looking very good. Another thing that they have done is they did a capital, uh, a cap um, bond, which, and this pertains to the St. Lucie facility, in which they floated the bonds with variable interest rates, and then they went out for a capital appreciation bond and they are guaranteed a 6% return, 6 point something percent return on that capital appreciation bond that pays the debt because they can use that to pay the debt on the St. Lucie plant. Assuming that interest rates don't go above 6% any time during that period of time, it works in the favor of, of FMPA, stabilizes the rates, and at the end of the time they will have enough resources to pay that off at one time. And it will be paid off, hopefully, a few years earlier in what they are getting from those interest rates. You're talking Stanton 1. No, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the St. Lucie plan on the capital appreciation bonds. Yeah. The, uh, St uh, the, St or the Stanton 1, that reserve account is already good. And so that is not under uh, cap bonds. That is being done as the bills that we're paying for our demand charge what goes to debt service is a little over collected, and so they're building up what is what is the bond reserve that is required by law, and they will hopefully be able to use that bond reserve to pay off early. It, it, again, if it was status quo right now, it looks very good on the payoffs of the bonds from FMPA, but you're right, a, an issue at a plant yeah. throws us in. Another question there. Um, and one of the, the annual debt report that we received, it has a, a graph showing FMPA debt, and quite a bit of it is synthetic uh, fixed rate debt. Um, do we know how much of our Stanton 1, 2, St. Lucie's involved with the synthetic debt? The fixed rate, I, do, I don't believe that there's any of the Stanton plant that's fixed. I think it's variable. It's all variable. And then, so the Stanton 1 and Stanton 2 would be the uh, fixed rates. I have one more but question. Synthetically fixed rates or fixed? Sorry, I'm just trying to get. Uh, synthetically fixed okay. rates. Okay, thank you. And so far, their game against those have been positive in numbers up to this point. Thank you. 
Uh, my question is, when we'll have a rate sufficiency? You know, over the last two years, we've had four small power decreases of this total around 10% or something a little over, or just about 10%. But the point is, the reason I'm asking the question is if, if we're operating efficiently and if the numbers come in properly, I want to hedge my words, if we, are, if we, if we know that we're going to have another rate decrease, at the time we do the budget, that would drive down the revenue, which would drive down the 6%, which would drive down the income to the city. So I guess my question is, will we, will we have a reasonable revenue forecast based upon an updated rate sufficiency? I am hoping in June we will have that rate sufficiency, that Be, we will project that rate. Because, you know, it makes a difference. I mean... Uh, at 5.4 million or whatever the number is, if the rates, I, I, I hate to use any number, but if the rates went down 5%, you're losing $400,000 worth of revenue or 420 as the case may be. Not, not that my number is neither here nor there, but, but my point is the numbers are fairly large because it doesn't take much of a reduction in the, uh, in the revenue of the, of the electric company to drive a, a significant significant reduction in what we have to spend. That's now, all. Just just so you understand, when we we don't speculate on what's coming next year, I know. we set hours based on what our revenues were the previous year. So it may work out that it's six point one or it may be five point eight if you do it over that year. So we we don't try to. We don't fluctuate throughout the year. We do it on. But to, to come back to your question, I am hoping in June we're going to we'll have those numbers projected. So we'll sit down at least with those numbers, so we will have a projection of what the revenue is. So the transfer, at least at that point in time, the six percent is six percent of a yes, sir. Yes, sir. projected number. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's holding us up is to make sure we get handle on this decommissioning of the power plant. We want to make sure we can cover all of those costs. And then we have the optimization study that tells us some things we're doing. And just for information and an update on that, they had the $14 million in the first five years. We have been doing some circuit, and some of it is based on what occurred at substation one that are going to reduce those costs somewhat, but it's not going to get below nine million let's put it that way so that that becomes a you know the capital budget for the tnd becomes a that is correct critical that is correct thing to understand all right if there's no more questions go ahead to uh, the city attorney's matters yes i'm sad to have to tell you that peggy lyon is going to be retiring the end of september mm. uh, what I like to do is to go ahead and start the process of, of finding somebody that's at least qualified to, uh, there, there's no way they're going to replace Peggy from the get-go. It's with her years and years of experience with the city and in local government, but the goal would be to find someone with substantial local government experience at least. Um, Peggy's position is a, an attorney one. That's what I would shoot for. Someone with su sufficient experience that they would fit fit in there would be at least five years of experience in local government. Uh, I'm suggesting that probably at least two months, and, and the reason I picked two months, because starting now, if you find some of them, someone of experience, it may take them some notice time for them to leave their current employment. But at least two months uh, worth of time working with Peggy and myself would, would give them a little bit of a heads up of the organization and the uniqueness of the City of Vero Beach and, and working within the policies and procedures and everything that we do here. Um, so I just wanted to give you that heads up and let you know that if unless there's a major objection to that or if there's the council objects to starting someone early like that, we would be having to bring back a, a future budget amendment uh, because of that. Um, open questions on the subject. Or Mr. Mayor, I, I'd like to make this comment. Uh, Peggy Lyon is an A triple plus employee. We were just down at the ethics thing in uh, Fort Pierce. 
and uh, it's painful to sit through three hours of the Sunshine Law and four it, hours. Four hours. I'm sorry. <laughs> I went great. to sleep one hour. <laughs> but be that as it may, I mean, you know, she knew more about the Sunshine Law than the presenter did, and she's almost an irreplaceable employee. So I, I, I think you need as much time and rope yeah, as you get can get, get you started. Because <laughs> she has done a wonderful, wonderful job and is a wonderful person. I mean, and, and just so you know, unfortunately, Peggy kind of, she worked for so many years classified as a part-time employee, she did not get accruing benefits. So actually, when Peggy leaves, she will not even be a big impact on our budget due to any payouts for unused sick or, or vacation time. Um, that's to her disadvantage, but of course, it helps the city budget. Um, unfortunately, she has been so de dedicated for so many years and been such a good employee. She's a workhorse. I mean, like we have to be in that office. And um, just the knowledge will be, be, in her experience, will be so sorely missed. But we'd like to get a jump on, on the situation and, and try to get somebody started down the road of learning what they need to know. Okay. I, I think you've got consensus on this one. Unless there's any ob objections or any no, questions. No. Okay. I appreciate that. Right. If there's anything else, just let me know. Yeah, I just had a couple questions of things that yeah, have been sent to councils. We have, um, did you say anything about this be motion before the Public Service Commission that we filed on April the 14th? I'm not sure what it is. City Vero What's Beach it? response to opposition to in opposition to Indian River Shores motion to strike. You give me just a that I wish we'd talked about that with Chef because uh, that would be in his filing, but it's just typical that the. We had filed a motion to dismiss. The Shores had filed a response to that. And I imagine what you're talking about is the, the response to that that Mr. Wright filed. I guess there's just another yeah, tip yeah. for going that, back and forth. My understanding, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, that it sounds like that may not even get finally heard by the PSC for some time. Apparently, That is correct. Uh, it'll probably be June. Uh, they okay. are setting their calendars now. Uh, for that, and it could be as late as July at one of the PSC meetings. My understanding is they, they have asked for an evidentiary hearing, but if the board allows that, it would be later. They could resolve it on the motion to dismiss, but we just don't know at this point. Okay. And then just another question. Um, there's going to be a conflict assessment meeting on Thursday, May the 12th at 9.30. Right. Is is that a closed meeting or open to the public? It'll be open to the public. I will be open to the public. But, and but it's going to be formatted around the issues that we present to them that are our, our, our objections to their ordinance, and then they will. And we've sent that to them. Yeah, already. it's defined in your letter to to their city manager. And say right. That. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. If there's no more uh, questions for the city attorney, I'll go ahead and move to public comment. Does anybody like to speak under public comment? Now's the time. Good afternoon. For the public record, I'm Phyllis Fry at 275 Date Palm Road. And you are occupying some very big seats up there, and they represent big decisions, everything from budget to the utilities issue to cutting the grass and everything in between and just want to let you know we appreciate it and uh, to my item um, it should come as no surprise to you that the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council has returned to Vera Beach to implement their 750 plan using taxpayer funded housing and transportation project under the heading of an art village but don't take my word for it do your own homework. Visit the 750 website. It begins with art villages. It says communities in Florida are using cultural arts and arts entertainment districts to energize downtowns, implementing zoning overlays to encourage the arts to allow live and workspace in the same unit, 
Utilizing street signage, street lighting, and landscaping. Complete streets, lower vehicular speeds. Emphasizing pedestrian and bike traffic with a mixed-use plan for low-income housing under transit-oriented development. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it should, because that is exactly what the Treasure Coast Regional <coughs> Urban Planner Dana Little said about Vero's Art Village project. Reading from the 750 Playbook, Executive Director Michael Busher of the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council writes that the project will encourage compact, mixed-use development that promotes high density and intensity of growth under TOD. And I spoke to the Planning and Zoning Department about this last week at their last meeting. We've already acknowledged that the housing and transportation project will be funded by taxpayer money. The president of All Aboard Florida's sister company, FEC, a keynote speaker at the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council Forum, said, quote, All Aboard Florida is a real estate play that allows us to move our urban areas and improve into urban areas and improve our portfolios, end quote. With the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council promoting the housing and transportation plan, it's paving the way through rezoning and promotion of grants, creating more debt. Fortress Land Holdings and a few affiliated developers will be pushing from the top to dominate our local real estate markets, deciding which businesses live and which businesses die. Using public-private partnerships where taxpayers bear 90% of the costs and create more debt. HUD will be pushing from the bottom with terms and conditions attached to its grants. These policies do not represent the principles of Indian River County for fiscal responsibility, smaller government, and local decision making. Because of this, this taxpayer funded All Aboard Florida 750 and the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council were rejected in three counties and their cities, including Vero Beach. If this council continues to support these projects, you're not representing the core values or the taxpayers' best interest, and we ask you to consider this. Just as a post comment uh, to let you know, on All Aboard Florida, we will be speaking to the St. Lucie County Board of County Commissioners tonight regarding the introduction of transportation of LNG, along with other hazmats along the FEC corridor with the high-speed trains in close proximity to the nuclear power plant for which their safety measures are vintage. So we're hoping to get some uh, response from them. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, Ken Day, 1846 21st Avenue, for the record. Uh, back on your agenda when you're attorney, Mr. Sheffright and his team are addressing you. Uh, they use the term, we're on the deed. Uh, he stopped by my seat a little while ago and informed me the city of Vero Beach is not on the deed. It's the FMPA pe people that are on there. We as a city, as you already know this, uh, we're responsible for what we have to do as far as to maybe ever get out of their contracts and to address the uh, contingent liabilities. I had another quick question. A few meetings ago, um, there was some monies that came back from the Orlando fuel agreement situation to the city of Vero Beach. I think it was a little over a million. Will that go back as a rate decrease to us all? And you had said something about you're going to revisit maybe do we get a rate little? It was a million six for what it's worth. I think it went right. to pay debt down. I, I, I don't think it came back to us. Or the, No, the OUC. OUC. Thing. You're asking OUC or FMPA. Right. Oh, no There's one of each. The answer to the question is all revenues go toward the rate structure. So, so will we get a little bit of a cost reduction when you do your rate? That is anticipated, through? not promised at this point, because that money could also go, for example, if it's, we see some cost overruns in cleaning up the power plant site. But the answer is that we hope that we will see a reduction, and I'm hoping to be able to show those numbers in June. In June, if we get a rate rate reduction, that's when that you'll bring correct. it to council's attention, and it be that, that your correct. decision of how you spend the money. <laughs> well, the the key is is that that money's not just a check that comes in here, and we decide how we want to do it. It goes as revenue to the 
uh, electric department, and then after we pay all the expenses, as Cindy reminds me on a regular basis, mm -hmm. it's a function of revenues versus cost, and what's left in that gap is what makes up our rates. Quick, reductions. and you don't have to answer if, you, if it's not a good time. Uh, with the numbers that you're looking at thus far, do you think we might be able to get a little bit of a rate reduction? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, thank you. You know, one thing about that, too, it was a million six sixty or something. Uh, Diane helped me with her last name. I can't think right now. Who was in the, uh, actually in the water lab, was moved over into the electric, and she found it. And uh, that's a lot of money, really. Uh, the other thing is, you know, the OUC rate, since uh, the change in the the contract that was negotiated in 2008, the improvement in the contract has been relatively favorable, and that made it even that much more favorable. So uh, part of that, of course, is lower price gas and so on. But, I, you know, kudos to an employee that uh, did a wonderful job again. Okay, we'll go ahead and go into uh, to council matters. Um, just wanted to announce we did do, uh, I believe uh, we hinted about the Lagoon Coalition last time around. Uh, we did get that one passed. There is no liabilities associated with that. We had a good hour long conversation on that. But, uh, you know, the whole purpose is, is that we get our counties uh, or our cities together to uh, have a united voice, mainly on the, uh, the Amendment 1 issue that. Uh, that the public overwhelmingly passed on a state level. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't go to what uh, what it had originally intended to. We're going to try to straighten that out and, and have a united front to uh, to get more of the money that's already been voted on towards uh, cleaning up the Indian River Lagoon. Um, also, had uh, a, a groundbreaking for the Vero Beach Baptist Church. There was uh, was over there at uh, uh, Osceola Magnet. There by um, Good Grief 60 and the, uh, the the new new hotel there. Uh, also attended Mr. Smoke's 35th year anniversary. Um, goodness gracious, uh, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody uh, have a store that uh, the line went out and around the block, started at 5 o'clock and didn't end till 5 in the evening. Uh, it was, was quite interesting. Uh, attended the Marty Fish uh, Tennis Championship. Um, it was really great. We had world-class leaders there, uh, tennis players. And, uh, you know, Tom and Sally Fish uh, did a wonderful job. Randy Walker uh, uh, outstanding and uh, Mike Rilehi, uh did that for 20 years and has really uh, done a, done a great job of getting the kids involved. It was nice to see the kids, uh, you know, out there chasing the balls and uh, supporting the, uh, the the tennis players. And and finally, I just wanted to uh, to make mention a great congratulations to uh, to our Congressman Bill Posey who had gotten the. Uh, the, the Federal Railroad Administration to uh, at least give us some information as to the, uh, the, the plans that all of Florida has for our county, although we are not uh, receiving our, our 90 percentile or 100 percentile plans for the area, uh, the Federal Railroad Administration has seen that. And uh, it's, very, uh, it's very comforting at the federal level that the FRA is looking at these plans and found quite a few deficiencies in safety. Uh, so all of Florida has at this time uh, been uh, been stopped from further uh, implementing some of these uh, these designs until they get their safety uh, plans in gear and, and, and back up to snuff. Uh, apparently, there's a number of uh, safety uh, issues that uh, were uh, uh, were uh, were deficient in, and no wonder they didn't want us to see these. But uh, in any case, we uh, we hope that uh, Bill Posey will keep on this and uh, keep the iron to the fire and keep these guys uh, accountable. Mr. Jack, could I ask that you distribute that for council? Yeah, that's. Uh, I, I got this this morning. Um, there's, in fact, there's a um, there's two documents with Martin County assigned to it, and I, and I believe I, I have it. You, I'll make okay, copies. is it in their boxes already? No, I haven't had a chance. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you'll, you'll yeah, get that, that. Uh, right after the meeting. Thank you. But uh, it's a very interesting read, and uh, I'm, I'm glad the process is is on hold. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Ole. Um, I don't have anything to say. I'm all set. Wow. Uh, Ms. Turner. Um, did want to say it was sad and we hear the, the passing of Frank Zork in our community who had been a great activist um, and spokesman here, here at, at City Council within our chambers. Over the weekend, they had a fundraiser at St. Francis Manor, which is uh, which was his brainchild to develop a 
low cost housing for our seniors that are in need. And um, we could remember him and continue to support St. Francis Manor and their good work. I need to congratulate our rowing, rowing group once again, our Vera Beach girls under Indian River Rowing Club won medals in the Sar state medals at the Sarasota competition. Remind everybody we've got a gallery stroll on Friday, um, Friday night this week downtown, and Vera Heritage will be honoring a Pioneer family on Saturday the 14th. Wonderful. Mr. Winger? I have nothing. Mr. Howell? I probably should have uh, brought this up under city managers matters, but um, I don't want to miss the opportunity to ask. We had a discussion about, um, for lack of a better word, the, the the homeless situation, sign holding downtown. Has anybody, has anyone been able to come up with some sort of a legislation anywhere that might work in our favor to stop the? Uh, well, we we've, we've got a draft ordinance that. Hopefully you'll see next meeting for, for, for the first time around, anyway, for public notice on it. You know, I've, I've got to say something. Um, you know, you should talk to John Pedersen about that. He, uh, he spent an, an awful lot of hours, um, uh, you know, patrolling that area. And I had a good conversation with uh, Joe Conrado yesterday about this. And, uh, in fact, he found that one of the peddlers had some, some illegal substances on, Is that on right? him. And that person will, will probably not come around anymore. And I believe there was another individual that um, had some issues as well, and that person will not be coming around anymore. But, uh, you know, hats off to our police department who have uh, taken care of that issue. And I, I, my hope is is that uh, this will take care of it for, uh, for quite some time to come. That's great. Thank you. Just a comment real quick. Uh, Wayne just passed to me. We got a final judgment on the Charles Fritz case, John Frost's firm. Uh, did a very good job for us again, and the final judgment was in our favor. Wonderful. Good to hear. Mr. Thank Howell, you. you want to make the motion? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. We are so adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you, sir.